Good evening, my beautiful brothers and sisters in Yeshua. This evening is um, Thursday, the 10th of August, 2023. It is 9.54 p.m. here in Australia. I hope you're all very well. I hope you're blessed. Um, I just had to jump on here before I went to bed to give you guys some encouragement and some really interesting and exciting um, Bible studies here. I've just been doing a bit of study. I've got a bunch of tabs open here. So basically, I've, I'm going to show you what I've been studying and looking at because this is pretty encouraging. And I want to put some connections together and some puzzle pieces together. And hopefully you guys will also have some puzzle pieces that go with this because I absolutely love that in the comments section and things like that or the emails that you send me where you're like, hey, have you ever thought of this or did you check this out? You know, I love this stuff. And um, this is so encouraging and we're all like little kids waiting for Christmas Day. <laughs> you know, we are just on fire and so excited and we're, we've got a sore neck from looking up. <laughs> but you know what? It's just, it's literally the funnest thing ever, isn't it? Like, it is so fun and so, there's nothing else on this earth that's so, um, that can be compared to watching and waiting for our loving Lord and Saviour Yeshua Jesus Christ. It's literally the best thing on this earth. So with that being said, I'm just going to talk about what I found here and um, hopefully it encourages you and blesses you. So let's jump into it. So I'm reading here in Proverbs 7 um, in verse, uh, we'll go from 19. For the good man is not at home. He's gone on a long journey. And he has taken a bag of money with him and he will come home at the day appointed now this is very interesting brothers and sisters it has a lot of things um, one which I'm just being reminded of now because I totally forgot um, second Passover okay second Passover uh, hang on a sec let's find that okay here in numbers 9 we have a second Passover and I'm just going to read the first 10 verses because we need to get the context of this story. Okay, And the Lord spoke unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Let the children of Israel also keep the Passover at his appointed season. So this seems to be the key word here, appointed time, appointed season. Okay, in the 14th day of this month, at evening, you shall keep it in his appointed season, according to all the rites of it, and according to all the ceremonies thereof, shall you keep it. And Moses spoke unto the children of Israel, that they should keep the Passover. And they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the first month at evening, in the wilderness of Sinai, according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. So did the children of Israel. Now listen. And there were certain men who were defiled by the dead body of a man that they could not keep the Passover on that day. And they came before Moses and before Aaron on that day. And those men said unto him, We are defiled by a dead body of a man, wherefore we are kept back, that we may not offer an offering of the Lord unto his appointed season among the children of Israel. And Moses said unto them, Stand still, and I will hear what the Lord will command concerning you. And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, If any man of you or your posterity shall be unclean by the reason of a dead body, now get this, or be in a journey afar off, yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. The fourteenth day of the second month, at evening, he shall keep it, and eat it with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Brothers and sisters, Father God has just added this, um, a journey far off. They were The people were only asking, what shall we do if we have touched a dead body? But Father God has added, or you are in a journey afar off. Who is the one that is in a journey far off? It is Yeshua, Jesus Christ. He is a good man that has gone on a journey, on a long journey, right? When he left the disciples, he says, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you in my father's mansion. Okay, there's many mansions there. And I'm going to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you're going to be with me. And we're going to be forever together. Okay, 
So with that being said, this has got something to do. This is highly significant. And this literally is my favorite feast of all the feasts of the father, because this is a free will offering. This is um, to me, this is what really counts is this second Passover, because the first Passover and all the other feasts, um, father said, you know, I turn my face away from the feasts they're abominable to me your sabbaths and everything i don't want anything to do with them because your lips are honoring me but your heart is so far away from me so he turns his face away from him but the second passover um you know he he goes on to say that um it's a second chance basically and that's so like our loving father and you come there and you offer a free will offering from your heart Okay, you don't have to do this. This is something that a person, when they feel like um, it's just something they want to do. And that's what Father is looking for, is the reins of your heart. Now, this is so incredible here that Father has just added on or be in a journey afar off. Okay, so we're going to go back to Proverbs 7. And then the good man is not at home as he has gone on a long journey. Okay, so we're putting these two things together. Um, what I always want to keep in the forefront of my mind, brothers and sisters, is Satan has to change times and laws. And it also says in the scriptures that Father God has changed the times, uh, changed the times and laws as well. Not the laws, but the times. And he's doing this because it is the glory of God to conceal the matter and it is the glory of kings or prophets and servants like us servants to uh, search out this matter okay and so we do not know if we are really in august right now in the year 2023 um you know like i said in a couple of my other videos ethiopia is um in the year 2015 right right now and on September 11th, they'll be going into their new year, into the year 2016. So um, we have no idea where we are. And like I have explained in a few of my other videos, um, back, I, I don't know exactly when, but it was like three or 400 um, AD, the Jews under the punishment of death were forced to change their calendar. And they're literally about 210 years and three months off um, and which works absolutely perfect because when you look at the Jewish calendar um, I don't know if we'll see it here but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the year 5783 okay 5783 and when you add 210 years onto that it'll be the year 5993 okay so seven years left into the year 6000 so whatever way you look at it whether you you know god is so good and so miraculous and so intelligent and so mathematical and so scientific that he literally has from the jewish perspective from the english perspective from um in every way that you look at it it's going to work out the appointed time is there no matter what Satan has tried to do, um, it's all just going to work out. So um, I've always kept that in mind that we really don't know when the true Passover is or when the true days of his appointed feasts are. So we are always, I, you know, I hold special in my heart every full moon and every dark concealed moon because any one of those throughout the year could truly be Passover, could truly be, you know, tabernacles, could truly be the Feast of Trumpets. Do you know what I'm saying? So I've always held that close to my heart that, um, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not, um, what's the word, confined to what the calendars that we have today. I just um, allow Father God to show me that there's an appointed time and those that really love him and are searching for this I believe so very much that like Noah when the time comes 
very close to the, the appointed time that we are going to feel it within our heart, soul and mind and it's just going to be undeniable, okay, undeniable. So, um, again, you know, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, he went on a long journey and he told his disciples that um, he's going to go and prepare a place for us all, that where he is, we're going to be as well. So, the next thing I want to talk about is this day appointed. Okay, so I have a look um, at all the ver the other versions of the Bible, like um, King James and you know the NIV, all, all the other versions, right, to see what they have written for day appointed. And I haven't talked about this in quite a long time, but many of you know that have um, watched me for years, you know that I believe that the um, the new moon. Is actually the full moon the full abundant moon I believe that is what is the first day of every month and the reason my biggest reasoning behind that is when they were first created in Genesis 1 it says that um, father made um, the two great lights okay the two great lights now a great light to me doesn't say a full Sun and a slither of a moon it says to me two great lights okay full moon a full Sun when they were first created therefore being the first day of their creation therefore being the first day of the month so with that being said I go and have a look at all the other versions and wouldn't you know what does the majority of them say he will come home at the full moon he will come home at the time of the full moon he won't come home until the full moon he won't be back until the moon is full he won't be back before the middle of the month he won't come home on the day oh, he will come home on the day of the full moon he will return home the day of the full moon he will not come home till the next full moon at the full moon he will come home at the full moon he will come home okay and it just goes on and on and on about the full moon not once does it say a dark concealed moon okay so like I said to me the full moon is the first day and the dark concealed moon is the 15th day of the month and that makes so much more sense to me because the 15th day of the month uh, the 14th day at evening when Yeshua Jesus Christ was crucified that it happened to be on a dark concealed moon which is the only time throughout the whole 30 days of the month um, that you can have a solar eclipse okay because the moon and the Sun they rise and set together when it's dark and concealed the moon and it makes perfect sense that um, talks about on Yeshua's death on the cross that there was a period of darkness for three uh, three hours and that to me screams solar eclipse but anyway we, we won't get into that right now but I just thought this was absolutely amazing how he talks about the full moon now with that being said I'm like okay the appointed time what that you know the whole um, the good man of the house being prepared what does it say in the days of Noah it says um, father told Noah to pitch up his ark and I've always thought about that as um, in relation to us if we're going to pitch up the holes in our faith right we're going to make sure that the time that we um, that we're coming up to now in the month of Alu which is going to be on the 18th I believe 18th of August I think that starts um, you know it's a whole month of um, repentance seeking forgiveness making uh, reconciliation for iniquity you know uh, trying to fix our wrongs that we can you know if you've stolen something go and repay or if you said something bad to somebody say sorry to them and ask for forgiveness all of that kind of stuff and um, another wonderful thing about the month of Alu is I'm, I did many videos of this years ago and uh, the story of Jonah okay when Jonah went to Nineveh it literally was the first day of Elu and he he um, preached repentance for 40 days so all of Elu and then the 
the, uh, the first 10 days of Tishri right up until the Day of Atonement okay because on um, the first day of Tishri uh, the books are open the books of life and death they're open and then you've got 10 days which are called the 10 days of awe and then on that 10th day the, the Day of Atonement the books are shut and your fate is sealed okay for that next year so straight away I was like Yeshua Jesus Christ told us there's going to be no other sign for this wicked generation except for the sign of Jonah and Jonah preached repentance for 40 days from the first of Elu to the 10th of Tishri okay so there's so much stuff going on here and now the other thing I wanted to show you was what the signs in the heavens look like on um, on the full moon okay on the full moon and it's going to be on um, August 31st now the wonderful thing about August 31st is we actually have two full moons in August so now this becomes a blue moon <clears throat> and a super moon so we had a super moon I, I believe around the 2nd of August and because we have two full moons in one month it becomes um, a blue moon but also a super moon so brothers and sisters as you can see here we've got the full moon it's a hundred percent on the 31st of August have a look where it is okay it is in the, in the constellation Aquarius coming out of the living waters coming from the man holding a pitcher of water now what does it say in Luke 22 again with the preparation remember how I talked about second Passover before now have a look at this um, then uh, then came the day of the unleavened bread when the Passover must be killed and he sent Peter and John in all the other ones okay in Matthew and Mark um, it, it just it doesn't mention any anybody's names but because again Matthew is for the Jews um, Mark is for the world and the unbelievers and Luke is for the church the bride and the guests okay so it's personalized he sent Peter and John saying go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat and remember Yeshua Jesus Christ said um, actually I'll get through that because it's down here I don't want to I don't want to skip too far ahead okay um, and they said unto him where will you have us prepare and he said unto them behold when you enter into the city there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water follow him into the house where he enters into follow him into the house where he enters into the full moon the good man the good man of the house is on a long journey and he's coming back at the full moon when you go into the city and you see a man holding a pitcher of water go into that house go into that house brothers and sisters okay and, and it gets better um, and ye shall say unto the good man of the house brothers and sisters we're just reading about him about the good man has gone on a long journey and he's going to return with a bag of money on a full moon and you shall say unto the good man of the house the master says unto thee where is the guest chamber <laughs> where shall I eat the Passover with my disciples and he shall show you a what a large upper room furnished there make ready our oh, brothers and sisters this is <laughs> this is amazing praise your holy name Jehovah this is absolutely wonderful and he shall show you a large upper room furnished there make ready and they went and they found as he had said see he says he promises his word is good and they made ready for the Passover and when the hour was come when the appointed time was come he sat down and the twelve apostles with him and he said this is the beautiful part and he said unto them with desire 
I have desired to eat this Passover with, with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God shall come. Brothers and sisters, praise the good Lord. Like this is unbelievable. Okay, with desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. I will not eat any more until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Okay, and he wants to, um, he wants to, he's waiting for us, brothers and sisters. It's not only us who are just living by bated breath each day and watching and waiting for Yeshua Jesus Christ. Yeshua Jesus Christ is literally pacing up and down on his mansions that he's prepared, waiting for his father to say, it's finished, my son. You have finished these beautiful prepared houses for your beautiful bride. Go and get her. Oh, brothers and sisters, this is, <laughs> this is so cool. Say to the good man of the house, okay? Say to the good man of the house, for the good man of the house is not at home. He's gone on a long journey. Where did he go? Up to heaven to prepare places for us. And he has taken a bag of money with him and he will come home at the a day appointed, which is said so many times as the full moon. Okay, as the full moon. And we can see there the big, abundant, beautiful full moon is running out of the, the pitcher of water, which is the man is holding. We're going to enter into the city. Okay, and look above it. Satan, us, uh, well, yeah, Saturn. Okay, when I, I was the reason I said Satan then is because I've been looking into Saturn and it's unbelievably evil, <laughs> pretty much. Um, so yeah, just a few things just to, to verify this, you know, it's like there's always something evil hanging around, you know, he's like a roaring lion waiting to pounce, right? And it says in Revelation 12. That, uh, you know the, the red dragon was waiting to devour the child as soon as it was born so he's always hanging around but you know what he he gets bamboozled <laughs> and cast down to this earth he's like what what happened there but um, yeah so check this out what we've got here um, some information about Saturn um, okay oh, what have we got Saturn mythology yeah. Um, let's read this Saturn is the sixth planet from the Sun and the second largest in the solar system after Jupiter it is a gas giant with an average radius of about nine and a half times that of the Earth oh, where? here we are Saturn is named after the Roman god of wealth and agriculture and and the father of Jupiter okay and have a look at um, Saturn symbol across okay across I mean whoops what are we all right sorry let's go back to this uh, where was I yeah father of Jupiter what else have we got written about it here? Oh yeah, the Romans named the seventh day of the week Saturday, or Saturni Dias. Okay, Saturn's day for the planet Saturn. So Saturday, the Sabbath. Pray that your flight is not on the Sabbath. I mean, you know, many people, many people are un, um, unsure about you know should be we be worshiping on the sabbath and things like that if you want to go and have a look at exodus mm, i think it's 15 or 16 i believe the reason i believe the whole sabbath commandment came about was because of disobedience brothers and sisters um father of the people had come out of egypt right they've just seen all these miracles witnesses all of god's power and then they're whinging and moaning about being hungry. 
So this is when the quails, I mean, sorry, when the manna came down and father said, all right, well, um, you know, pick up double on the sixth day because, you know, nothing's going to fall on, on the seventh day. <clears throat> so pick up double, right, on the sixth. And, and um, I believe very much this is what Yeshua was referring to when he was talking about the burden of the law. It's not to say that the law is done away with, but the law was is only there for those um, who are disobedient. Because those who love Yeshua Jesus Christ and love his Father and want to do the will of the Father, um, the Holy Spirit resides in us and we we don't ever we can we're more in tune with feeling if we're grieving the spirit, right? Or we're quenching the spirit. Grieving the spirit is um, doing anything that's unholy or um, that's going against God's word or anything like that. And quenching the spirit is the spirit wants to just glorify God all the time. Okay, and it wants to do good works and charity and kindness. None of this is us. Okay, we're wretched sinners. But the Holy Spirit that lives inside us, it wants to just continuously praise the Father. Right? And when we um, are like, you know, when we get led, oh, go and help that person or um, tell somebody about the gospel. And we're like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. That's quenching the Spirit. Okay, and we shouldn't do that. Um, I'm getting sidetracked here of what I wanted to say. Um, what was I saying? Oh, with the Sabbath day. Okay. Or, this is why it says, I believe in the book of Romans, I think it is, to judge no man on his Sabbath day um, and what he eats and what he drinks. Because this is all a shadow of the things to come. Okay. Those of us who are looking and watching and waiting patiently for the appearing of the Lord and Saviour Yeshua Jesus Christ, because we love the Father so much, like, you know, most of us, when we talk about the Father, we talk about the Son, we start tearing up. We start, you know, not being able to speak properly because we're just so in love with them that's this is why the law is not a burden to us and is we're not burdened by the law because we have him in our lives every day we're constantly in communication with him we have a relationship with him we love him so the law isn't for us the law is for those that are disobedient and lost all right it's to it's to bring them back it's like a map to put them back on the straight and narrow path right the way to the father but um, so, you know, when, you, when I'm talking about the seventh day of the week, Saturday, coming from the, um, you know, being called Saturn, Saturn's day, don't think I'm trying to um, dishonor God or anything because I'm talking about, you know, this is the Sabbath day. But, but you have to look at it, brothers and sisters. Even Yeshua, Jesus Christ himself said, you are of the father. You are of your father, the devil. And um, these people who say they're Jews, but they're not, they're really from the synagogue of Satan. So he speaks more um, abruptly of the Jews and the Sabbath. And this is why he said, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. Because have you noticed, brothers and sisters, that Yeshua Jesus Christ literally did all of his miracles and everything on the Sabbath? He, um, he went on a long day's journey on the Sabbath day. He picked corn. He healed the blind man. Um, you know, he did heaps of stuff on the Sabbath. And this is the reason why they wanted to stone him. Because, um, you know, they were like, um, for instance, when he got the dirt and he spat in his, in his hand and he rubbed the dirt to make it just mud, right, to put on the blind man's eyes. They, in their uh, rabbinical books, it says that, um, they hated him because he was trying to create on the Sabbath. Okay, he was trying to create because, you know, man comes from the dust and the dirt of the ground. And like, I mean, this is how far away the Jews are. They're just so full on with their tradition. And this is why Father said, don't judge any man um, on his Sabbath day because it's the, the reins of your heart 
okay that um, father really wants the same thing with you know don't care what you eat or your drink because that goes into your stomach and comes out the other end right it's what comes up out of your heart that father is concerned with now I've gone on a complete tangent talking about something else but um, let's just get it back on track here but um, like I always say I always um, ask father to speak through me so obviously that needed to be said because sometimes we get so caught up in the logistics of um, you know religion that the father doesn't want any of that this is why he made that uh, second Passover for people to come with him to, to him with a loving heart and a free will offering something that they want they want to be close to him okay they want to be in union with him and guess what because of his son's precious gift on the cross it is because of Jesus Christ and what he did is we can be reconciled back to the Father. And when Jesus took that last breath on the cross, that temple veil rent in two and we have all access to the Holy of Holies. Okay, before the holy feet of Father God, we can now come. Like this is just what a good news. Praise his holy, holy Jehovah name. Okay, so back to this. So um, I'm just really stuck on this, brothers and sisters, because this is amazing, okay? He won't come home until the full moon, and then we have a full moon here in the pitcher of water. Um, and, you know, Luke 22, and he say to the good man of the house, um, you know, enter into the city, and there you'll meet a man bearing a pitcher of water, follow him into the house where he where he enters into and Yeshua he, he's pouring out living waters for us right right at the back the end of the Bible it talks about the living waters that Yeshua Jesus Christ is going to give us that we're never going to be thirsty ever again um, so what else have we got here I was just having a look at all the appointed times and um, you know when Yeshua went into the temple and opened the scrolls up, he talked about the appointment. He's coming to um, talk about um, the appointed day and to proclaim liberty to the captives. Everything is appointed and um, everything has a set time, even the rapture, brothers and sisters. And again, I stress. That father said there's nothing he's going to do unless he he reveals it to his servants and prophets first so um, just have another little quick look about here I mean the whole thing with Saturn is so bizarre I've always found it it's like Santa as well Santa Saturn whatever um, San, um, Saturn and Jupiter are like literally the biggest um, the biggest so-called planets okay um, and uh, look when you read the extra biblical books the apocrypha like the book of Enoch he talks about the planets okay um, and he refers to them as wandering stars and what they are they're actually um, when the angels had fallen when they came to um, to the earth and everything their punishment was to be ban um, banished into the firmament into the darkness okay and this this is actually what Enoch calls them um, he's actually saying that these so-called planets what we call planets are actually um, the fallen angels being in prison in, in to the time of judgment right and it makes a lot of sense because Enoch also describes them as mountains burning with fire now what do we read in Revelation is it I want to say 8 um, yeah the second angel sounded as it were a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea so this is always 8 verse 8 chapter 8 verse 8 um, you know a great mountain burning with fire when I read that in the book of Enoch I'm like oh my goodness is one of the planets the so-called planets um, is that's what's going to be cast down 
onto this earth is it representing Satan because Satan gets cast to this earth right I don't know I'm just theorizing here but um, you know Satan Saturn Santa and it's just oh, anyway um, what else have we got here can't really remember what I was looking at there oh this is all to do with the angels of Saturn right they've got this book the seven archangels the angels of Saturn um, yeah it's just um, yeah so AGL is the intelligence of Saturn mentioned as the spirit in such works as the key of Solomon it's just it, the whole thing with Saturn and there's a whole thing with like um, Solomon's temple and you know that's why the Illuminati they're right big with the um, you know temple of Solomon and that's what they want to rebuild and all this kind of stuff are uh, here and also to confirm okay so we're going to quickly go to Daniel sorry if I'm all over the place here I'm just going where the father leads me um, Daniel 9 right 927 as we know that the um, the global summit goals that are coming on September 18th <coughs> basically that's going to, it says here and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and so many people think that um, um, an agreement or a covenant is going to be made but the word confirm when you have a look here it means to strengthen so the covenant is ready there brothers and sisters what this um, Daniel 9 27 is talking about is it's going to be strengthened so everything in this covenant is already been done and we can see this so very much from around the world like particularly for this um, the global sustainable development goal thing that's coming in September this has been going on since 2015 right is that right 2015 something like that so basically um, you know and it's been working all the way up to their end date which is 2030 there's a whole big agenda and now it's in the midway point and you know it says here in the midst of the week um, oh brothers and sisters I'm telling you this the season is so glaringly neon lights billboard in your face right now it is I just have this feeling that as we get closer, just like the days of Noah, Father's going to be saying, uh, for in seven days, I'm going to make it rain. And then we're just going to know, as a combined body, we're just going to know. And this, and we're going to get some kind of supernatural, super huge faith come over us, and we're just going to be able to minister and heal and do all the wonderful works and really bring in the last souls for the kingdom this is very very exciting and you know we should all be ecstatically happy um, and joyful because this is amazing so um, what do we have here oh yes I was just looking at um, Chittim okay because if you have a look here um, where is it it's Daniel go to Daniel 11 and Daniel 11 is exactly what's happened in the last three and a half years um, you know there's this person that's um, he enters peaceably uh, where are we and the arms shall stand on his part and they shall pollute the century of strength and take away the daily sacrifice and they shall place the abomination that makes desolate that's literally happened in the last three and a half years with the you know what they are polluting the sanctuary of strength the temple of God which is within us because father doesn't reside in temples made by hand he resides within us okay and the other side they have polluted the century and they've taken away the daily sacrifice and um, they've placed the abomination that makes desolate in the century 
okay and they're going to do wicked against the covenant okay and they're going to corrupt by flatteries and that's exactly what they did by flatteries they got so many people to take the you know what telling them that it was all you know all this wonderful thing and the best for humanity and you know we're going to give you money we're going to give you food we're going to give you mcdonald's i was just ridiculous but so many people went and did it okay it's not the m-a-r-k okay but it is the abomination of the desolation because desolation means to make empty and because of the the um you know the things that you have to get after it you know number one number two number three number four more and more and more it's just creating this desolation within the body okay within the temple okay and listen to this and they that are um, and they that understand among the people shall instruct many okay so the people who were told at the beginning of this drama at the beginning of 2020 um, those of us who were listening to the Lord we instructed many we're saying please don't take it don't take it please don't take it okay but listen yet they fell by the sword and by the flame by captivity and by spoil for many days and they're going to be helped with a little help but that many will cleave to them with flatteries okay there's going to come a time of respite which is happening right now the whole world's on this weird mm, we're, we're kind of normal we're kind of going back to normal but in reality a lot of us realize that there's no normal coming back okay and many of them if they brought out a new mandate tomorrow many of them would run with their hands up and their arms out going yes please i'll have another one you know what i'm saying okay and some of them with understanding so even some of them that knew and were actually preaching about this they will fall and guess what it says to try them to purge them and to make them white this is exactly like revelation 7 um, where it says who are these um, who are these people you know and he's like these are they that came out of the great tribulation they had to wash their robes white okay in the blood of the lamb they had to wash their robes white right now we're having the free gift of Yeshua Jesus Christ and his blood covers us and we are accepting that golden ticket and we believe in that and through that belief we will be saved and not perish okay but the lukewarm ones the ones that aren't fully trusting in in father and his son they're going to have to go they're going to fall and they're going to be purged and tried and they're going to have to make their robes white even to the time of the end because it is yet for a time appointed here we go again with the time appointed okay and the king shall do according to his will and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god this is exactly like second thessalonians chapter 2 and he shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods and he shall prosper until the indignation be accomplished for that is determined shall be done okay and um we got down here and he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas and the glorious holy mountain and that's already happened the um the abrahamic house of faith that's over in abu dhabi the mosque the synagogue and the catholic church there they've already had um you know synagogue like um they already are having like worship there already this is what i'm trying to get at everything um in daniel um daniel 9 confirming just means they're strengthening what's already there okay satan and his crew literally have their hand hovering above that big red button and they cannot do anything until michael stands up and um and in revelation 12 you know michael has the, the war in heaven with satan and his angels and casts him down okay then satan is wrath because he knows he's got a short time left which is 42 months exactly half 42 months is three and a half years it's exactly half of seven years so we have made it through three and a half years of tribulation brothers and sisters this is the tribulation of those days what matthew 24 talks about we are not in the great tribulation but we are in the tribulation of those days 
okay and this is like the final test for the body of Christ to stand firm to stand strong like Psalms 91 says we're going to see everything with our eyes but nothing will touch us so we've got nothing to fear we've got nothing to fear we just stand there we have the grace and the protection and the almighty wings of God surrounding us but this is a test brothers and sisters and through our trial and persecution this is what makes and refines our our um our spirits into gold okay this is what father it pleases father that we go through this trial and tribulation but we are not appointed to the wrath part which is the great tribulation first you have the wrath of the lamb okay remember it says when they were running to the um you know running to the caves and the mountains asking the rocks to fall on them they said oh um you know the day is here and who can stand f um f for the one who sits on the throne that's the that's father and from the wrath of the lamb this day has come who can stand okay the wrath of the lamb is for the great tribulation of the left behind saints okay that's the wrath of jesus christ because um you know father married israel and that's what jacob's trouble is it's israel's trouble and yeshua jesus christ made um you know he, he made a, a marriage covenant with us the church and those who did not accept him and have uh, committed adultery with other things this is what this great tribulation the wrath of the lamb is for and then after they are removed and they are taken up as guests the bride's already there we're accepting the golden ticket right now and then the guests come that those the great tribulation the multitude that no man can number once we're all safely in heaven that is when the wrath of God the great wine press will happen because everybody after that everybody that's after the great multitude that no man can number it says and they repented not and they repented not and they repented not okay those 144,000 messianic Jews they hold the commandments of God and the testimony of Yeshua Jesus Christ they are going to be the final witness that goes around and let everybody know they're going to be completely fine because they're going to have the seal of the living God on their forehead but um, everybody after the um, you know the multitude that no man can number once they're up then is the wine press of God and again I want to go back to that analogy of the field okay you've got a field a big square field in the corner there's the barley in the field there's the wheat and the tares okay the wheat and the tares have to grow up together and when um, and when it's and then around the outside of the field is the grapes okay so first we have the barley which is the tiny corner pocket we get taken okay snatched hapazo raptured whatever you want to call it we get taken and inspected and uh, protected okay and then the wheat and the tares that are in the field along comes this machine called the tribulum which is the tribulation the great tribulation and it separates the um, the wheat and the tares okay and the wheat will be tried and purified and refined in fire okay and um, the tares will be removed and then um, after the um, the wheat has been tried and purified and refined then they get um, taken up to heaven um, they wash their robes white and they have palm branches in their hands singing hosanna hosanna in the highest okay and then comes the great wrath of god the wine press that's the outer field of the grape harvest um, that is what when no, none of us none of us who believe even lukewarmers or on fire people none of us are appointed to that wrath okay because this is for the wicked the adulterers the murderers the um you know the people who reject god and hate god that's for them so we don't have to worry about that but uh so again i tend to go on a little tangent all the time but um yes so to confirm something is to strengthen it it doesn't mean to set something up it means to strengthen so everything is in place brothers and sisters it has been for a long time 
and like I said that hand is hovering above that big red button and um, you know once I, I do believe there's going to be a little peace and safety when the bride is removed okay the voice of the bridegroom I think that is the reason why there is peace and safety because the voice of the bridegroom has been removed and there's no more so-called nagging or trumpet blowing or warning or standing on that wall and shouting um, you know here comes the enemy here comes the enemy you know look out but we've done our job no matter how stupid we sound to the to the world you know we've told them the high suspects of the Antichrist um, Obama Donald Trump King Charles you know so even though the people may have mocked and scoffed and said you're crazy whatever didn't really listen all of that stuff will come to the forefront of their mind once we're out of here and they're gonna at least know okay it is a brilliant plan of our loving father because he loves each and every one of us and he doesn't want anybody to perish and um, some people just must be refined and um, and purified in that fire but it's all good it's all wonderful it's all part of God's beautiful plan okay um, oh yes yeah, so here oh that's what I was getting to in Daniel 11 um, right down here uh, where are we here in verse 30 for the ships of Ch Chittim okay now when you have a look at Chittim um, where did I ah oh, where did I put it what did I call it let's have a look date modified I did it today oh, Israel map here we are awesome okay Chittim is right here in Cyprus okay this is Israel here right this is the West Bank Gaza right here um, and Chittim is here so the ships of Chittim brothers and sisters I have for years I have felt within my soul that this is where um, the armies are going to be surrounding Jerusalem right that's where they're going to come from the ships okay and it says um, you know when you therefore see the armies surrounding Jerusalem then flee to the mountains um, you know and that when you therefore see the abomination of desolation and flee to the mountains I think this is where the army is going to come from from this sea here from Chittim okay from Cyprus and it's just going to come out of nowhere I don't know I could be completely wrong but it just seems like a perfect entryway into this you know because Israel is so tiny and so small and the fact that you know Chittim has a lot to do with polluting the century and it's just in the time frame of now so very interesting um, yep yeah, so what else have we got here Jewish calendar so September so what did I say was the first of Alu so the first of Alu um, like I said for 40 days so all the way to the first of Tishri and then you've got your 10 days of awe okay to Yom Kippur um, so I'm going to leave you that brothers and sisters otherwise um, whoops sorry otherwise I'm just going to be going off other little tangents and making this video way too long so that's absolutely amazing he won't come home until the full moon and the good man of the house is you know when you see him go into the city there you'll a man will meet you bearing a pitcher of water follow him into that house where he enters into and this is where the full moon is on October 31st it's a blue moon it's another super moon absolutely beautiful I hope this video has encouraged you brothers and sisters I hope I haven't gone and confused you too much but um, 
this is just another I'm not setting dates I'm just showing you the incredibleness of God's glory in the sky and in the heavens and maybe this could be another part to the puzzle so I hope this has blessed you I know it's blessed me I'm so excited I love finding all these little nuggets of gold everywhere um, yeah brothers and sisters I love you very much and if I do not see you in the next video I will definitely see you in the sky God bless you love you bye bye